Hi, I'm Jonathan Oxter and this is Walk Time Blog number 24, storing parts for electronics, projects, Arduino stuff, any random thing. Now, I'm just in the process of setting up some drawers, but before we get to that, I'll show you what I've got so far. For many years now, I've used these little drawers for things like resistors and I've got capacitors and other miscellaneous stuff all um, in those and um, that's not really enough. Anyway, there was a recent special on at Element 14 for a whole bunch of these drawers for something in the order of $15 each. So I got 11 of them and I'm going to set those up. But um, back to the story at hand, what I've found just as a general principle is it's good to have a few different sizes of storage. So small drawers for lots of little parts. Obviously that's not enough. I need about 700 drawers, not however many there are there. Then the next size up, I found these particular tubs to be really handy. I got these from the reject shop. I think they come in like three packs or five packs. I can't remember for, you know, it works out to be like 50 cents each. Dirt cheap. So those are a good size for things like parts for small projects. If I'm working on something, I used these a lot when I was working on Practical Arduino. Um, that's actually what a lot of these are from. Like the Speech Synth project, for example. What it meant was that I could just chuck all the parts for that particular project into one container and then um, when I wanted to work on it, I'd pull the container out and everything is right there. So that's really handy and it keeps everything self-contained. Then the next step up from that, I've got these containers which are I think 36 centimeters by 26 or something in that order. Um, so those are good for um, slightly larger volume things. So I've got pneumatics and uh, ICO stuff here, uh, some things I've been working on with Andy Jelmy for, um, uh, yep, for various things. And then the next size up above that, I have these flat tubs. So these are like, you know, the big plastic storage tubs you find in Bunnings. In fact, these ones did come from Bunnings, but they're quite shallow, which I find really useful. So in this case, I've got a whole bunch of USB cables. Um, there's another one under there for boxes, and I've got just different um, topics. So the idea is that, oh, and I've also got some of the big height boxes as well, but the idea is that by having a combination of little drawers, sort of small boxes, medium-sized boxes, and large boxes, I can just pick whatever is appropriate for the particular thing I'm working on. But anyway, the point is now I need to mount these on the wall. And I'm going to use this bit of wall right here. And um, so I've already been using the whiteboard to work out some dimensions. Um, but I don't want to do too much damage to the plaster. So what you can see I've done is I've got a bit of yellow tongue um, floor sheeting, which is 19mm uh, material, and screwed it to the wall. I found the studs first and screwed it in. And so the idea is that what I can do is screw the, uh, put little mounting screws for all of those drawers onto this and I don't end up with a problem. This gives me a nice solid mounting base so I can put screws in anywhere and I know it's going to be strong and the drawers will be securely mounted um, and it means that I don't chew up the plaster too much. So if I remove this later, all I do is take all the drawers off, unscrew the sheet of wood and then I've only got six little screw holes to fill and paint over so the wall itself will remain totally undamaged. That's the theory anyway. So the next step is to start mounting some of those, um, those little drawers. So I'll be back in a moment and I'll tell you how we've gone. To make sure I get the um, shelves straight, what I've done is screwed this piece of timber on, on the bottom. So this is coming straight out at a 90 degree angle. It's not going to stay there permanently, this is just as a base to work from. So the idea is that by um, sitting the shelves directly on this base um, platform, I can then screw them back into this board on the wall of this sheet and um, then I can remove this and everything is good. Uh, and also the other thing is that because the edge of the yellow tongue is exposed, I've got a little bit of bead and um, tacked that on the edge. This edge is going to be exposed and I didn't want just the um, slot of the edge of the chipboard shown there because it will look pretty ugly. The other trick worth noting is how to get the screws in there. 
it's really hard trying to get the screw in because it's quite a narrow space and if you put it on the end of the screwdriver it falls off. The trick for that is a little double blue tack. That means you can put the screw on the end of the screwdriver, reach in, and it won't fall off. Perfect. And there you have it. My own little private JCAR store. Well, at least it will be once it's all fitted out. So we've got lots and lots of empty drawers, no dividers in there yet, no labels, nothing in it. But that will all come soon. Oh yeah, one other thing I should mention. As you may have noticed, there is a sliding door behind all of this. So that means, what did I screw it into on this side? Well, the sliding door cavity itself has a number of horizontal supports running through. So there is a stud that runs down through the wall about here. Down this side, I screwed the timber straight into the stud. Over this side, I screwed it into the horizontal supports. And um, I actually had the door taken out when I was doing this, so I've just put it back in a moment ago. I put the screws through. They protruded too far through the other side, so I measured how far they were, pulled them back out, cut them with an angle grinder, put them back in again. And so now I've got screws on this side that go into the supports and stop flush with the back of the timber, and that way they don't foul the door. And the sliding door all works perfectly. So, lots and lots of storage. Lots of drawers to fill. Now, I've got to get to that. See ya!